Welcome to Word at Noon. In our first passage today, we are going to hear how God promised to give Abraham the land of Canaan and how he protected him as they traveled. Psalm 105, 1 through 15, and verse 42. Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him, tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles, and the judgments he pronounced. You, his servants, the descendants of Abraham, his chosen ones, the children of Jacob. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever, the promise he made for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath he swore to Isaac. He confirmed it to Jacob as a decree, to Israel as an everlasting covenant. To you I will give the land of Canaan as the portion you will inherit. When they were but few in number, few indeed, and strangers in it, they wandered from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another. He allowed no one to oppress them. For their sake, he rebuked kings. Do not touch my anointed ones. Do my prophets no harm. For he remembered his holy promise given to his servant, Abraham. In this second passage, we're gonna hear how even when we are outmanned, that God's presence and our praises of God is where our victory comes from. And I, as you hear this story about a physical battle and physical armies, I want you to begin to visualize how you praising God today, you staying connected and honoring God today in your heart, that's the key to the victory that you can experience Let's listen and begin to visualize what our victory will be like today. Second Chronicles 21 through 22. After this, the Moabites and Ammonites with some of the Meunites came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. Some people came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from Edom from the other side of the Dead Sea. It is already in Hazazon Tamar, that is, in Gedi. Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. The people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. Then Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in front of the new courtyard and said, Lord, the God of our ancestors, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nation. Power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. Our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? They have lived in it and built in it a sanctuary for your name, saying, if calamity comes upon us, whether the sword of judgment or plague or famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and will cry out to you in our distress and you will hear us and save us. But now here are men from Ammon, Moab and Mount Seir, whose territory you would not allow Israel to invade when they came from Egypt. So they turned away from them and did not destroy them. See how they are repaying us by coming to drive us out of the possession you gave us as an inheritance? Our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. All of the men of Judah, with their wives and children and little ones, stood there before the Lord. Then the Spirit of the Lord came on Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, 
the son of Mattaniah, a Levite and descendant of Asaph, as he stood in the assembly. He said, listen, King Jehoshaphat, and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, march down against them. They will be climbing up the pass of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jeruel. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your positions, stand firm, and see the deliverance the Lord will give you. Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow, and the Lord will, will be with you. Jehoshaphat bowed down with his face to the ground, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down in worship before the Lord. Then some Levites from the Kohathites and Korahites stood up and praised the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. Early in the morning, they left the desert of Tekoa. As they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, Judah and people of Jerusalem. Have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets, and you will be successful. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out at the head of the army, saying, Give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. As they began to sing this praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, who were invading Judah, and they were defeated. Would you celebrate with me that today your victory comes not in your own strength, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And this is how I fight my battle And this is how I fight my battles This is how I fight my battles And this is how I fight my battles It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Cause this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Cause this is how I fight my battles Would you take this moment and affirm to God that you know the only way you'll be victorious today or tomorrow or any other moment of your life is through being surrounded by His presence and opening your heart to His presence instead of just trying harder and would you receive the filling of the Holy Spirit in this moment and begin to claim the victory that God wants you to experience in your life today.
Now, we want to hear once again how high the stakes are for how we live this life, for what we do with this life. Jesus is going to tell us about a very narrow path that we must take towards him and, and what happens when we don't take that narrow path. So let this scripture be a warning for you. Let this scripture be an inspiration for you for taking the narrow path today. Luke 13 verses 22 to 31. Then Jesus went through the towns and villages, teaching as he made his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? He said to them, make every effort to enter through the narrow door, because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. Once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you will stand outside knocking and pleading, Sir, open the door for us. But he will answer, I don't know you or where you come from. Then you will say, We ate and drank with you, and you taught in our streets. But he will reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Away from me, all you evildoers. There will be weeping there and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God. But you yourselves thrown out. People will come from east and west and north and south and will take their places at the feast in the kingdom of God. Indeed, there are those who are last who will be first and first who will be last. At that time, some Pharisees came to Jesus and said to him, leave this place and go somewhere else. Herod wants to kill you. So let's pray together. Father God, though an army surround us, we will not fear. Though the enemy comes against us, we will not tremble. Though people accuse us and attack us and demean us, we will not cower. We are strong in you. Though it seems like we're surrounded, our victory comes in our praising. Our victory comes in our receiving of your spirit. Our victory comes in standing strong, not in being strong, but in standing in the strength. Your power, Lord, is made perfect in our weakness. So God, come and dwell us in our areas of weakness. Come and fill us in these places where we don't have much to offer you. But all we need is what you have to offer us. In Jesus' name, amen.